Plastic PT, you may not be familiar with the name, but you've seen it everywhere. PT stands for polyethylene terephthalate and is a derivative of petroleum and natural gas used all over the world to make non-biodegradable plastic bottles. The only advantage is that PT plastic is also recyclable several times. This is where Petco and its plastic waste recycling chain comes in. Our journalist met with Joyce Kashugi, its Kenyan director in Nairobi, to understand how this community of producers and collectors committed to fighting waste and pollution works. Listen to her. What is the state of recycling in Kenya? Kenya has actually made a lot of strides in terms of managing PET plastic pollution. Um, I'll remind you that we are the host nation for the United Nations Environment Programme, which means we also have a very huge collective of civil society that are operating in, from Nairobi or Kenya in one way or another, especially around matters of environment and conservation. So the joint effort to see uh, plastic pollution being managed has been very loud uh, in Nairobi. And uh, that being said, Rwanda was actually one of the first countries in the world to ban plastic bags. Uh, Kenya followed suit as a second country and successfully so in 2017. And what that meant uh, was that other plastics then got attention. What is the state of recycling and waste management around the region? So today the East African community, and I would say the region, and I will include for purpose of this discussion the Gulf region, um, that's Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti. Um, waste management is a challenge, okay? Um, our populations are growing and they are growing exponentially. And what, me what that means is that consumption is also growing, okay? You have to realize that um, our production systems now uh, and our lifestyles are more reliant on us being able to move around faster with a lot of ease, which means plastic consumption is going to be not imperative, but it is a necessary evil, okay? And so the challenge, and I keep repeating and reiterating, is not plastic packaging. The problem is how consumers are disposing this packaging after they have consumed the product. Um, and so, as a region, uh, the volumes of plastic are expected to, to grow significantly. Here in Kenya, we are looking at a three-fold increase, um, which means we are looking at a million plus tons of uh, plastic being consumed per year in the next four years. As Petco in Kenya... What role has Petco played in recycling in Kenya? Over the last four years, we've been able to build a community of practice together with our brand owners, manufacturers, bottling entities, waste collectors and recyclers. As I said earlier, we have been able to lobby government to craft a law that allows us to operate in a mandatory environment as opposed to a voluntary one where only those who are willing to do good for the environment were our members. But now that every company that is putting product or packaging into the environment will be held responsible for their actions in terms of handling that product post-consumer. And while that has been successful, um, it's also required for us to reorganize ourselves so that then we are able to develop an organization that's fit for purpose in terms of being able to provide value for our membership current as well as potential in the context of all packaging material. For the last four years, we've been focused on PET plastic packaging. Uh, but as we shift now into a more mandatory legislative environment, we're looking at all packaging. One of the most beneficial things about having a law, any law in place, is that it creates a predictable environment. A predictable environment allows anyone to plan better, be it a business, be it a, a consumer, a resident, anybody. So that's a very predictable and a beneficial aspect of having a law. In what ways Petco and its members leading the recycling conversation 
and the role of extended producer responsibility. Our membership controls about 60% of the beverage sector. And our strategy to drive circularity has been very intentional. Uh, with all, our members uh, today actually implementing very key strategic and intentional, um, uh, I would say, uh, initiatives around designing for recycling and designing for the environment. Okay, uh, notably over the last couple of years. Uh, and Europe was the first place where Coca-Cola, for instance, was able to switch their Sprite bottle from green to clear. Uh, today, if you were to visit our recycling plants, you'd realize that we used to have a huge heap of green bottles. Um, green as a packaging color uh, might be attractive to a consumer, but when it comes to recycling, the clearer the packaging, the higher its value because it's able to be applied into more different uses, okay? And hence it fetches a better price. So what that meant was before when we had a green packaging color for Sprite, yes, it, there was demand, but the pricing was very low, which meant our collectors who were actually recovering these bottles were actually also getting a lower price despite our subsidy. Can you tell us more about the landscape of plastic pollution and recycling in Kenya? Today, as a nation, we are importing about 480,000 metric tons of plastic resin. This is for all types of plastics into the country. Out of that, you'll find only about maybe 30,000 metric tons is going into PET bottle production or PET packaging production that is used for food grade purposes. Not medical, but food grade purposes. Um, a lot of the other material is uh, polypropylene, PP, which actually takes up a huge chunk of that 480,000 that I had spoken about. And then, of course, you have your polyethylene, your high density and your low density polyethylenes, which are also very prevalent. The challenge we have today is that uh, for the high density polyethylene, the low density polyethylene and the polypropylene, they are easily recycled and upcycled in our country. We have a lot of installed end-use capacity to recycle that product. When it comes to PET packaging, we don't have a lot of upcycling facilities. We only have the primary processing facilities, as I mentioned. And the challenge with that is the demand that recyclers are able to create in terms of how much they pay for the material to be collected is lower which means not competitive. It's not in the interest of any collector to spend their time collecting material that's not going to pay them back a tidy sum compared to the others. And so in that regard, one of the key things for us and our organization has been how do we shift recycling from primary to more upcycling. We've seen our governments in the region take a concerted effort, make a concerted effort to try and put in measures that ensures that we are shifted, shifting our economies toward circularity. More recycling, more reuse. There's still an opportunity with giving some rebates, you know, tax rebates, financial benefits to people who are investing, looking to invest in recycling. You have to appreciate that Recycling, and especially on the African continent, is over 95% mechanical, which means we are doing the bare minimum type of recycling, which means we are collecting the packaging material and we are crushing it, uh, shredding it probably into flakes, at best extruding it into pellets. Unfortunately, most of that material is ending up in different countries, developed countries, where then they put it into a new application, where they upcycle it into a new product. Is this type of recycling done in other African countries? We are not doing that here in Kenya. Um, a few countries in Africa are doing it. Egypt, South Africa, Nigeria uh, are doing it, but not in, in Kenya. Um, however, what we have been able to do uh, in identifying that as a challenge is to grow the number of recyclers that are actually able to recycle mechanically so that they can then uptake a lot of the bottles that are being 
leaked into the environment. And that has been transformational in that through our subsidy support program, where we put in an amount of money per kilogram of bottles collected by a collector, uh, the push effect and the pull effect from the market has been very high and very positive. We, and that's what has led to us growing our re recycling volume so significantly over only a period of four years. Yeah, it has taken South Africa 15 years to be able to grow volume significantly. For us, it has taken a shorter period. And largely, it's because our market understood that subsidy model very quickly. It's upcycling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's upcycling. It's upcycling the packaging product. And um, that's beneficial because today, if you look at Kenya, for instance, we have a very huge export business around polyester, around making of clothes for different brands, international and global brands, but we're importing that polyester. Yet, we have all these bottles that we're exporting and just to bring back the polyester. So there needs to be a balance that we strike, even for our trade balance, okay? Um, and so I feel like that's an opportunity. However, uh, we do need to pat ourselves on the shoulder in that as a region, we have made a concerted effort through the East African community to legislate circular economy. Um, I know the SADC, the South African Development Corporation, are also doing the same. Um, and I think that's a plus. The beauty with circularity is that the impact is not only felt from a financial perspective, there's also the social component as well as the one on the environment. I would say the future is bright in the entire waste management space. From collection, um, I see numerous opportunities um, not for small establishments or small companies, but larger companies could be um, in terms of, um, you know, global brands that are service providers in waste management actually coming into the country. And that's because we have a law that creates a predictable business environment to do it. Um, I also see opportunities in recycling. Um, and this is because as our consumption is g going higher and higher um, due to our population growth and, and other, you know, uh, aspects, the reality is there's no better place to invest in recycling than Africa. And I'll say that because um, you'll find a lot of European countries are collecting their waste for waste to energy, okay? We're in the tropics, we don't need the energy per se to heat our rooms or our houses, but we could use the energy for something else. However, in terms of recycling and upcycling, there are many other beneficial uses where we can be able to recover material for other uses. Today already in Kenya, the recycling of polyethylene, high density, low, low density polypropylene is very high, nearly 70%, okay? Um, and that can only keep growing. And for the other types of plastics and materials that were not being recovered, the sky is the limit.